Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be doing another internal force problem. And in our previous video, we already discussed all of the concepts related to internal forces and how they work in problems like this. So I'm just going to try and solve this problem today as quickly as possible. Um, so the first thing we need to do for any internal force problem is determine our reactions. And we know from the problem above that we're going to be looking for E and F's internal forces. So what reactions do we have? We have a reaction here, AX. And a reaction here, a, a Y for the pin. And then we also have other reactions created in this pulley's rope, right? We have two tensile forces. How did I know that these are both tensile and they're both the same? Well, we know from our machines problem that we did a little bit earlier that the force within the pulley's rope is going to be consistent throughout the entire length of it. And if we also consider the free body diagram, just for this member and exclude the pulley, we know that from that reference frame, we're going to have two tensile forces supporting uh, this member, right? And if you need a recall on that, you can click the link at the top here. Um, so now we have every reaction identified. We can also identify here that we're going to have a force resultant created by this distributed load, OK? So. Now we can hop into solving. The first thing I want to do is just solve for FR quickly. So we have the height of our distributed load here multiplied by the span it covers, which is going to be six meters. Those meters cancel out, and we're going to be left with 1,800 newtons. The next thing I want to do is solve for the moment at A. Why am I doing this? It's because we are trying to find these tensile forces first, and taking the moment at A is going to get rid of these reactions temporarily so that we could solve for these single unknowns, right? And remember, tension is going to be the same in both of these sections. So we have zero and our convention here equal to 1800 negative because it's going clockwise from point A. And we have three meters distance from that point. And then we also have the tensile force, which is going to be positive, but it's not just T. It's going to be T sine 45 because we're taking that y component of t, right? That distance is going to be 3 meters away. And then we also have the tension at the other end, which is 6 meters away. Solving for t, we are simply left with 664.9 newtons. And then from there, we can solve fy so that we can get that ay component. And we're going to have negative AY because it's going downwards. We have negative 1800 for that FR. And then we have the positive 664.9. But we're taking what component? The Y component. So once again, we're taking the sine 45 of it. And then we also have the other T on this end, which is going to be 664.9 with no component because it's going straight up. It's just a straight up y value, okay? So a y is going to be 664.9 newtons. Lastly, we take the f at x so that we can find the ax component. And there's only going to be one other opposing reaction to it, which is the tx. So we have negative ax here plus the t which was what we solved for it earlier, 664.9. And we are taking that Tx component, right? So we're taking the cosine of 45. Solving Ax, we are left with 470.2 newtons. And now we can start isolating our, our cuts and figuring out you know, what the internal forces are at these points. I'll do point E first. And the side I'm going to take is the left side from the cut E. Because it's simpler, it's going to be easier for us to analyze, right? So let's take a look at what that cut's going to look like. OK, so now we have the cut made. And you can see we're following the convention from our previous videos. And we have the AY and the AX already solved for. Uh, but we need to resolve for this FR because now we're considering a smaller span, right? We only have 1.5 meters that we're considering. So the first thing I'll do is take FR which is equal to 300 newtons per meter, multiplied by that new span, which is 1.5 meters. And those Ms are going to cancel out and give us 450 newtons alone. 
And now we can go ahead and solve the rest of this problem. So the first thing that I want to do is solve for the moment at E because it's usually the trickiest one to solve for. So we take the summation of moment at E equal to zero. Remembering our sign conventions, of course. And we are going to consider first this FR, which is going counterclockwise, which means that it will be positive. We have 450, which is 0.75 meters away. Half of 1.5 meters is 0.75. We have to also consider this moment at E. We cannot forget that, which is going positive, right? And then we have the AY, which is actually creating the negative moment there. And AY is what? 664.9 newtons. And that distance is 1.5 meters. Solving for a moment at E, we are going to have a negative on this side when we bring it over. And that will leave us with a negative 659.9 on the other side of the equation, meaning that the way we drew it before is correct. And we also have 659.9 newtons per meter as our final answer for it. Next, we can take our summation of forces at x. And we know that there's only one other uh, x component in this problem, which is the ax. And ne should equal that in opposite direction, but equal magnitude. Therefore, ne, which is our normal force at e, is going to equal 470.2 newtons. Lastly, we have the forces in y. And we have two y uh, forces here, the ay and the fr. So we have to consider both of these. We have first the shear force at e going downwards based on our convention. We have the 450 resultant force going downwards as well. And we also have the ay, 664.9, which we solve for bringing the shear force over. We solve for 214.9 newtons. And that is your final answers for the cut at E. And similarly, we can do the same at the cut at F. So let's take a look and solve for that right side of F since it will be simpler and finish this problem. All right, so now we can go ahead and solve for this side of the problem at the cut F. It's very similar to what we did before, except now we're dealing with this tensile force in the pulley, which we solved for previously. And we have the FR again, which is gonna be based on this 1.5 meter span from the cut. So we can solve this pretty much as we did before, taking the cut at F and first doing moment at F equal to zero. And this will allow us to solve for moment at F, right? That's gonna be negative because it is going clockwise. Same with the 450 Newton resultant force, which is 0 0.75 meters away from that cut. And the tensile force is going to be positive since it's going counterclockwise. And that's 1.5 meters away. Solving for MF, we are going to be left with 659.9 newtons per meter. And the signs are positive, meaning that the direction we've drawn this in, based on our convention as well, is correct. So we can move on to our forces at X. We notice there are no X components in this problem, meaning that NF is going to equal zero. Then lastly, we take that FY to solve for shear force. And we are going to be left with the shear force, positive, minus that 450, plus the tensile force, 664.9 newtons, solving for VF. We are left with a negative number, 214.9 newtons. Which means that we can leave the answer like this, but we know that the shear force is actually looking something like this, going downwards, uh, parallel to that cross section, right? So these are your final answers for the cut F. And I hope this helped to understand internal forces a little bit better. And we'll do one more problem just so we, that we can really solidify you know, our learning. All right, so I hope this helped.